This is part 60 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to make AJAX requests using jQuery AJAX function. In jQuery, we've got several functions available to issue AJAX requests. We've got load, get, and post. We have discussed all these functions in detail in the previous sessions of this video series. All these methods are actually wrapper methods and they use AJAX method under the hood. Let's actually confirm this. Let's flip to Visual Studio now. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. Notice that at the moment we are using the jQuery post function. Let's right click on this and select go to definition. So we are in the jQuery source code now and notice this post function is actually calling jQuery AJAX function. Similarly, get also calls the jQuery AJAX function under the hood. Notice that it's calling again the jQuery AJAX function. Now let's quickly check it for load. To call the load function we need a selector so let's include a dummy selector here. And if we scroll down a bit further, notice that even the load function issues a call to jQuery AJAX method. So all these functions, that is load, get, and post, under the hood, they actually call the jQuery AJAX function. These wrapper methods are easier to use, but they do not provide much flexibility. If you want to have complete control on configuring the behavior of the AJAX request, then use AJAX method. Here is the syntax of AJAX method. We pass a single JavaScript object and this object is going to contain all the options that define the behavior of the AJAX request. If you want to know the complete list of options available, then visit this jQuery documentation URL. So on this page, we have all the options available that we can use with this jQuery AJAX function. So for example, if you want to specify the URL to which you want to make a request, then you use this URL option. If you want to specify whether you want to issue a get or post request, then you have this method option. If you want to issue a get request, you know, you specify get. If it is post, then specify post. Similarly, if you want to call a function, you know, when the request completes successfully, then you have the success option. If there is an error processing the request and if you want to handle the error, you can specify a callback function using the error option. So now let's look at an example of using this jQuery AJAX function. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's actually modify this example to use the jQuery AJAX function instead of post function. So I'm going to leave this code here. So let's go ahead and use the jQuery AJAX function and to this function I'm going to pass a single, actually if you look at this jQuery AJAX function uh, IntelliSense, notice that it is showing you know URL and then options parameter. Actually this AJAX function has got two overloads. The first overload is this one where you can specify URL parameters separately and then all the options that you want to include and we have another overload here where you just pass the um, JavaScript object and specify all the options including the URL. Let's go ahead and use the second overloaded version. So we are going to pass a JavaScript object and here we are going to specify all the options. So first we want to specify the URL to which we want to issue a request. So I'm going to use URL colon and then the URL itself. Okay, and next we want to specify the data that we want to pass to the server. So I'm going to use the data option and we have the object here. So let's copy and paste it. So that's the data that we want to send to the server. Then we want to specify the type of request, you know, whether you want to issue a get or post request. And to do that, I'm going to use this method option. So I want to issue a post request. And I'm, I also want to specify the type of data that we are going to get back from the server. Now to specify that, I'm going to use data type option. And we are actually going to get XML data back. So let's specify the data type as XML. 
Now once the request is processed successfully, we want to you know handle that response and then display that within the UI elements. So on success, I want to call a function. So we can specify a callback function here. So I'm actually going to make a copy of this one. So let's go ahead and paste that there. So that's it. So whatever we are doing here, we are now doing using the AJAX function. So we have specified the URL, we have specified the data that we want to pass to the server, whether we want to issue a get a post request. Here we are using the post method. So it's going to issue a post request. That's the reason we have specified method as post. In case if you want to issue a get request, simply change it to get. And the return type, that is the type of data that we are expecting from the server, is XML. We have specified that here using the data type option. And here we have the success callback function. And we have that success callback function here. All right, so let's go ahead and delete this bit from here. So let's save the changes. Let's go ahead and reload this page. Now, when the text box receives focus, we should get the help text. And if we view the request in Fiddler, it should be issuing a POST request. Now, if you want to issue a GET request instead of POST, simply change the method to GET. So let's save the changes. Reload this page. And the last request should be a GET request. Look at that. It's a GET request. And notice that the help text key is actually appended to the URL. And here is that code which we have just discussed. In our next video, we'll discuss how to call and consume ASP.NET Web Service using the jQuery AJAX function. That's it for today. Thank you for listening and have a great day.